Hello everybody, it's Terracon4 here, and I am going to be doing a quick little tutorial. This time I'm going to be showing how to create a hover tank. I'm going to be using the uh, player turret controller, the hover controller, and also the interact and possession system in order to show this. Right off the bat, this is more or less what we've got. It will always be rotating. The movements are not rotated, so I'm currently putting forward input, and it will have the input. So the whole vehicle itself feels more slow and lumbering, which I like. Also, when I adjust the free cam, it will only rotate the turret and leave the chassis, the hull, oriented as it was. So this is more or less what? I'm going to be demonstrating how to make, assuming everything goes well. <laughs> so, first of all, we need the actual assets. In this case, I've got one that I already built here, and this one is ready to be built. For starters, though, I already started naming and bringing this stuff in. We've got the actual base of the chassis. This is set to simulate physics static mesh. Then on top of that we've got the turret. Its pivot is at the appropriate location. And then we've got the barrel and the emitter for the barrel. The chassis you'll notice has base 1, the turret has turret 1, and the barrel has barrel 1. These are so the turret controller will be able to identify them. Then we've got a spring arm, 0, so that it will be identified by the hover controller, camera 0, so it will be identified by the turret controller for where we're looking. And then you'll see this group of pivots and blades. These are for each of these, with the initial pivot being effectively a simple arrow that I have pointing in one direction, and then the blade is attached to it with zero relative rotation, so now whenever rotation happens, we can just add that locally around one axis, and the blades will spin. Then, because we're using the hover controller, I've got a series of arrows here, which are hover source 1 through 10. These are what are going to be tracing for the actual hovering of the actor itself. They're just arrows, so nothing special about there as long as they've got the name. So, now, let's start first. We'll add the hover controller. And movement-wise, since I like this thing to be a bit on the slower side, 2, 4, lower some of the speed values a bit. For rotation, do not limit rotation to actor speed. The chassis can spin around on its own, even if you're stationary. Um, rotate inputs, no. I, for heavier vehicles like this, I like forward to always be forward, because otherwise if your camera is, say, pointing to the left and you input forward, it will actually rotate that to be a sideways input and make the tank move in this direction. Now, you input forward, even if your turret's looking this way, it'll still be moving forward down the direction that the tank is pointing. So, spring arm, zero. That's what that zero up there means. So, this will be using that spring arm. Then the hover settings, we're going to want to bump this up a bit, since it's a somewhat bigger actor than default. We'll want it to be hover source, that's the keyword. That's what all of these arrows are relying on. So it's going to find all of those and use those to trace to see whenever it's above stuff. So it'd also probably be a good idea to have some on the inside section of it, but I'm not bothering to that extent. And lean in, I could do, but in this case, I'm just going to not bother having this whole thing lean in. So. That is, for the most part, that done. So now, turret controller. We're using the player one. It is targeting camera, zero. And everything else is pretty much, by default, mostly good. We just need to add our turret. So we're going to limit the barrel rotation so that it can spin freely all the way around, but the barrel can only go up and down so far. So it can go up 70 and down about 5 degrees. Speed, 50, 40. Eh, let's go with 55 horizontal rotation speed. 
And that's more or less what we need for there. So now we need to have some actual inputs. First things first, hover controller. Drag out a reference from that, then add forward movement. Add a look at direction. Add sideways movement. Now this uh, project has the third person and the hover and other stuff already set up, so my movement axis are all ready. So wrong one. Forward, there we are. Move forward axis events. Plug that in. Then let's see, the first one would be look up. Event. Yeah, turn if I recall was, yeah, the one used for turning. And straighten those out a bit. You could also, for the record, just use the uh, get lookup. And rather than using the event for both of them. So sideways, that is right to move right if memory serves. So with this, we can now properly move our actor around, but we want a bit more than that. So keyboard, let's just grab a random one of these now. C, C, there we go. So now when we hit C, we're going to want to take the hover controller and free cam rotation. Now, a variable, create a variable boolean if you don't already have it. You can do this in a variety of ways, this is just how I like setting this up. So when you press it, free cam will be enabled, and when you release it, free cam will be disabled. In this case, camera controls rotation is the setting, so we're going to use a not node, which will make effectively the opposite of whatever this current value is, is what we'll be using here. So, with this, whenever we press and are holding C, Free cam will be enabled, and camera controls rotation will then be set to false. So the hover controller will ignore that, but the turret controller relying on the camera, which we're not going to mess with, will still be good. Spinning blades, because why not? <laughs> Let's see, grab a reference to each of these blades, and then add local rotation. Connect to each of the blades, and again, because these are already on those arrows that are, that are pivot for their opposite rotation, all we have to do is split struct pin and plug in to the, yeah, set up a multiply node. Now, in this case, we're just going to do 360 for one full rotation to world seconds for the tick. Effectively, it's the same as this. And then I have a variable blade RPS, rotations per second. I'm setting it to five. You can set it to whatever you want. And then, left mouse button. I have a new event for when your left mouse button is pressed. And on pressing, we shall spawn actor from class. And for this, the emitter component, we're going to want to reference get transform. Now, ideally, we'd have a better projectile already set up, but since I'm just reusing one from the AI turret pack quickly, I am going to be, instead of directly linking this, I'm going to up the scale of the projectile a bit. And then moving on, we'll also spawn emitter at location. Same location. And also scaled up a little. And this will spawn a particle effect. We'll just use the explosion small. So whatever effects you have. And with this, we have more or less got uh, spawn actor node has, right, I did not set the projectile. CT, firing projectile. So there we go. 
So with this, we should now be able to take our new tank. And for quick testing sake, I just use auto possess usually. I should have moved it up a bit higher above the ground before placing it, but either way, here we go. And with this, we now have a tank. I might have lowered this one's rotation for the chassis a bit too much. <laughs> yeah, I definitely cut that down a bit too much. Oh well.